the Black Panthers teamed up with the KKK in Las Vegas to get their welfare checks back. Wait, you said what? Ooh, boy, that's a big allegation right there. Walking through the crease and the cracks of the streets. Struggling for some food and a bed to sleep. While trying to cause overthrow, I'm feeling weak. Ideology buff. Welcome to Overthrow Media's Big Villain. It's your comrade revolutionary, the best MC in international sex symbol. Well, yeah, baby, yeah. Little conversation got sent to me um, between Jimmy Door and Mr. Moppin over here. I guess we're going to be mopping the door with Jimmy. So you're saying, and you're saying there's evidence to back this up, that there are YouTubers in the political lefty space. And a lot of them, you're saying a lot, not just, but a lot of them, and you, and they're called bread tube. And you're saying that those people are somehow being co-opted by the intelligence communities to push an agenda. Sure. I mean, I received uh, quite a bit of information about who was advising them. There's a, an individual who's tied to military psychiatrists who appeared on CNN uh, calling for mass deprogramming of the country after January 6th. Um, and there are other other things that point to some kind of covert support, uh, the mainstream media highlighting some of these people and celebrating them. Um, and then their foreign policy stances uh, could come directly from CNN. So this isn't new that the CIA, the intelligence communities, that they co-op media and they fund media directly a lot of times and to push an, an agenda, an a, a imperialistic uh, hegemonic agenda. Uh, that's, this is not new. This isn't a crazy conspiracy theory. This has been documented. Uh, well, the church committee, uh, that was in the seventies. And what, t can you talk about that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it became revealed in the 1970s with the church committee that was during the presidency of Jimmy Carter. You had a congressional committee that investigated the FBI and CIA, and they revealed a number of things, including Project Mockingbird, which was you know the CIA's wing that was handling the media, as well as Project MK Ultra, which was about promoting uh, hallucinogens and drugs uh, on college campuses and into left wing and radical spaces. He is saying that the bread tubes, the leftist YouTube is being infiltrated by the CIA. Damn, I think that's an oversimplification if you ask me. Because the CIA did make Project Mockingbird back in the what, 60s that was there to influence media. Why do we think that YouTube would be exempt from that? But the fact that it is attributed to BreadTube or the left specifically is kind of ironic because we see clearly that they're also influencing the right. The CIA, the government, the military all want to have their hands in every source of media possible. That means the left, that means the right, baby. That means both sides of the situation are having people either placed in there or influenced by that. Not to mention that we digest the propaganda that is put out there by the U.S. and internalize that so often, especially in America. If you think uh, that's something that's unique to BreadTube, then I think you're delusional. Not to mention coming from the person who was a picture of Abraham Lincoln on the wall whenever he has seminars and shit. Like, bruh, mopping, mopping. We about to mop the floor with you, my nigga. Like, this is what's gonna happen. You are perpetuating CIA propaganda. You are perpetuating patriotism to a fascist nation that is known as America. You lack nuance. It went flew over your head like a spaceship. And why the fuck did your face look like a goddamn cherry, bro? I don't understand it, man. You Look, just stay out the sun. You ain't made for the sun. You ain't pigmented, my nigga. Project Mockingbird and MK Ultra were very real things. Distorted little Keebler elf. But MK Ultra, it wasn't to promote the drugs through communities. Unlike when the US government promoted heroin through the black community or crack cocaine and try to get us all addicted so they can get more capital out of us so they can have a war. What it was doing was testing the effects of LSD as a brainwashing chemical to be able to shape the minds of people and get them to do things that the government wanted them to do. But what they found out was it wasn't very effective. That in fact, all you could do was break someone's mind but you couldn't rebuild them in the way you wanted. They were not giving it to people to get people addicted or hooked. In fact, when they realized how useless it was for their agenda, they put it as a high priority drug to keep out of people's hands because instead of making them good followers, they did quite the opposite. Made them question everything. They just thought at one point that it might be a good weapon and it just wasn't. 
And yes, yes, they broke some people because they would sit there and traumatize people and try to break them. But like I said earlier, you can't rebuild someone you break. Based on some of the people associated with BreadTube, and now based on that smoking gun we got from Gray Zone, it's pretty clear what BreadTube is. It's an attempt to control the narrative and make sure uh, that people who are interested in socialism and workers' rights and opposing the police state, uh, that they you know, follow a certain foreign policy agenda. And there's nothing particularly scandalous about this. We should, we should almost expect this kind of behavior. Uh, at the end of the day, right? I mean, this is how they work. They, they try to craft discourse in their own way. What's interesting is that the primary activities of the bread tube crowd seem to be about getting left wing voices to kind of, you know, participate in this partisan red state versus blue state fight. What they want is an army of foot soldiers to do the work of Joe Biden and protect Joe Biden from the Republicans. And if you can just, you know, cancel anyone who's deemed quote unquote right wing, uh, you can you can isolate people and make them loyal foot soldiers of, of one section of the ruling class. Except I didn't know who these people are. Who are the people who are on bread tube? You, you mentioned someone named Destiny. I don't know who that is. Who, who else? But these are popular people. Sure. Well, this Destiny character, who I guess, you know, he's considered he's kind of the kingmaker of BreadTube, if not part of BreadTube himself. Right. Really? Uh, he's a guy from Nebraska uh, who worked at a carpet cleaning company, but figured out a way to start playing video games on the Internet full time. But then he started debating right wingers and mainstream media outlets were like heralding him as oh, this famous Internet troll is going to debate the right wing and debate debate Trump supporters. And he was getting a lot of play that way. And it seemed like that was his new his new gig was debating folks. Uh, there's this character, uh, I almost don't want to say his name, but I think we know him as, as Vosh. Can you smell the circus? Oh, shit. No, he, he's from Beverly Hills. Um, and he right now is just a cheerleader for the Azov Battalion and the far right extremist forces in Ukraine. Uh, he's gone, gone all the way into just, I mean, he wants this war to keep going. He wants Russians to die. He wants, he wants a big war between the United States and Russia. And he's made that clear. And Again, uh, if you watch his streams, what's what's kind of amusing is that he's not very familiar with left wing politics at all. You know, Mumia Abu Jamal, that was an important cause in the 90s. This was a black liberation fighter who was facing the death penalty. And the reason that Mumia Abu Jamal is still alive, he didn't get the death penalty, he's still in prison. But the reason that the, the state of Pennsylvania couldn't execute this former Black Panther was because a lot of people of different political views came together to stand against his execution. Uh, you had the far left, communists, anarchists, others. You also had black nationalists, people with the Nation of Islam, Minister Farrakhan. You also had Catholic priests and nuns. The Pope stood against the execution of Mumia. You had Mennonites and Amish people. And in 1995, it was hundreds of thousands of people piled into Philadelphia with one demand, don't execute Mumia Abu Jamal. And that's why Mumia, this black revolutionary journalist, wasn't executed because people came together, overcame their differences. <laughs> okay, so this cat just talked about what, how serious political organizing works. Dude, this dude's a fucking joke. He literally has speeches in front of Abraham Lincoln head. You know, the same Abraham Lincoln who said, yes, I end slavery only because I had to. And if I had a choice, I would not have ended it. I also don't believe that black and white people should mix or that we should live in the same spaces. He's basing his whole ideology on this fool because he wants to unify people as patriotically socialist somehow. Though capitalism is literally in direct opposition to socialism. But hey, fuck it. He said who he thought the bread tubers were, right? He really called Voosh and Destiny bread tubers. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Bread tube and debate bros completely beef if you haven't noticed. Not very many bread tubers fuck with debate bros. Voosh and a Destiny are the Bay Bruce. They're not even leftists, they're like centrist at best, which centers in America specifically, which means they're right wingers. Now, Voosh, yes, is he a tool? Absolutely. I think he's more a tool of fascism than the CIA, but you know, it is what it is. You can make either allegation that makes some degree of sense. However, the fact that you try to lump them in with the bread tube is, is a joke. Bread tube literally is radical left. If you ain't radical left, if you're a liberal, then you're not really bread to, man. And I also find it funny because if I haven't seen this video and I'm just reacting to the pieces of it, I also got to say they regurgitate a lot of the voosh rhetoric. They try to oversimplify things and take race out the equation or act like black liberation is a diversion except to tokenize them. Yes, there is the problem with the idea of making it left and right, left and right, and that the fact of if you don't say the right things, 
then you will be exiled from the leftist ciphers. I think the problem isn't really about the bread tube or the left, but about them graham crackers. You know what I mean? The only grams that got is the ones that put up their fucking nose. It isn't the fact of having an ideology that is communist, socialist, or anarchist. But hey, what do I know? I've only been organizing longer than any of these fools. <laughs> this fool said he came out and Occupy Wall Street. I was organizing before that, and then I probably went and crooked his nose, maybe. I don't know. Because, you know, the love proletariat, we were there, baby. We were there, and we weren't necessarily putting up with the techie, know it all type attitudes, think they know something when they're not the ones in the struggle. Again, they've gone after you because, oh my gosh, you interviewed a bugaloo boy, right? But none of this cancel culture ever applies to Joe Biden. You <laughs> ever. Know? You ain't black, author of the crime <laughs> bill. I mean, I mean, but none of I mean, you just just have to vote for him because he built because, the, he because, built the cages those kids are in. He's the one who made it so you can't get rid of your medical debt or your student debt and bankrupt you. He made it. He's the he's been the screwer of the American people. He's been the why are uh, most of our prisons uh, uh, filled up with uh, black and brown people because Joe Biden. Uh, yeah. so yeah, they'll, you'll never get, they'll never cancel him, but they'll try to cancel me when I speak about Joe Biden in an honest way and tell people to stop voting for him. Sure. And it, the crazy thing is, you know, there's the, the narrative that they have is so shallow. It's basically, there's this group of bad people called fascists and yes. they're under every rock yes. and they're hiding on behind every tree. Yes. Every Trump supporter is a Nazi. Yes. Every conservative is a Nazi. And they're not even understanding that fascism, there is a scientific Marxist understanding of it. Read R. Palm Dutt, read uh, Georgi Dimitrov, right? There is an understanding of where fascism comes from, and it flows from the breakdown of capitalism. It's a system, you know, when you have the capitalist system with profits in command, you inevitably have economic breakdowns and, you know, great leaps in technology lead to greater poverty. And as there's greater poverty in society, one faction of the ruling class wants to lock down society drive wages down and reduce living standards uh, and degrow, which is another big bread tube theme, degrowth. Uh, they want to degrow in order to try and stabilize the capitalist economy. There's a scientific Marxist understanding of what fascism actually is. But in their minds, fascism is a question of good people versus bad yes. people. And if we just drive these bad people uh, out, uh, then everything will be fine. Well, no, but it's not a question of good people versus bad people. It's a problem rooted in the system, the fundamental flaws of the capitalist system. So they think that people like they'll say Donald Trump and Ted Cruz are fascists, but guys like Joe Biden, and Kamala Harris are good people as if they serve as if they don't serve the exact same people and have the almost the exact same agenda except with tweaks on the on the margins no jimmy jimmy no sit sit jimmy shut your mouth shut your mouth listen for a motherfucking second first off nobody's saying that joe biden isn't a motherfucking fascist well nobody who's actually a bread tuber is actually saying that except for white people because white people like yourself and like mr Moppin over here cannot perceive the reality of fascism is way more uh, nuanced than they tend to think. Meaning that it's not just what happens to white people that matter to define if something's fascist or not. Let me say that again. It's not just what happens to white people to define if something is fascist or not. Capitalism falling apart is not what causes fascism. Capitalism is fascism. How many people know what fascism is? It's the merger of state and corporate power like what happened in Italy under Benito Mussolini or in Nazi Germany under Adolf Hitler. And if we really look at our disastrous present at this mad war for corporate wealth in Iraq, for example, what do we have? The merger of state and corporate power. Let me repeat that for you. Capitalism is fascism. It is the fundamental foundation of fascist societies. You name all these white dudes that you should listen to, right? And you do not actually listen to Mumia Abu-Jamal about what fascism is? He doodled fascism. If you took the time out to really study Mumia Abu-Jamal and his writing and stuff, he very clearly calls out America for being fascist. Which means not only is Donald Trump fascist, not only is Joe Biden fascist, but every single president of the United States, every single politician, and the corporations that support it. You think that we don't understand what fascism is, but you don't understand what fascism is. That's the real problem. Because a lot of y'all are actually low-key fascists. You have a low-key fascist on the wall behind you 
Abraham fucking Lincoln. All the traits of what makes fascism fascism can be seen by the US if you count how it treats the people of color instead of just the white people. Shit, you could sometimes even see what how it treats the white people. The Lua Massacre, perfect example. Not to mention the fascists that have been thought of as the original fascists, though that's a flawed idea, took all their inspiration from the US. The solution to the Jewish problem was derived directly from the US's solution to the Indian problem. Who was the first founder of eugenics but the US? And even, let's think about it. What do you think was happening during slavery? But a form, an early form of eugenics. We see fascism everywhere because fascism is everywhere because we live in a fascist nation people being suspicious of jimmy talking to some boogaloo boys is valid does it mean that every boogaloo boy is a fascist no but you can't be mad at people for thinking that now i get it jimmy has this war with the young turks and the young turks some strike breaking pieces of shit let's not play about it that being said the harm that they're doing with some of the propaganda they put out is just not accurate. That doesn't leave a good look for you, Jimmy. And then you got this predator, Caleb Moppin, over here platforming this fool. And this dude ain't no real builder. I ain't never seen him really build. This is talk from someone who's on the streets to be making shit happen and is known for it. Whether you like me, love me, hate me, it doesn't matter. You know I put in that motherfucking work and you can't deny it. And I've never seen this fool once. I've never heard of any real impacts he's had or any real p impacts his organization has had by any org I build with. That's my org that I'm a part of. Now, we ain't heard of y'all. Straight up, y'all in some clown suits. You'll talk a whole good game about this cancel culture, but like y'all ain't been canceled, bro. Look at your following, Jimmy. You making plenty bread. Nobody's canceling you. You know how hard it is to cancel a white person? Y'all the ones that be really canceling people getting working people to realize their own economic interests. And they have a word for that, right? If you want to raise the minimum wage or if you want Medicare for all, you're a class reductionist. That's their term. What? Yeah. Immediately they scream class reduction. What does that mean? Ever raise I don't know. I don't know what it means. <laughs> but uh, if, if you if you want to fight for economic justice, you're a bad person. You're a class reductionist. And they, they have all kinds of lists of, of, of accusatory names they throw at people. So and one of them is is if you believe in economic justice, if you raise economic issues, if you don't focus on the culture war, you're a class reductionist. That is such, that's, that's, well, what I, what I enjoy telling people is that when you hear people who say they're on the left in the United States and they say things like, uh, oh, we have to organize along class lines, right? We have to organize, you'll, I'll, you'll even hear the knuckleheads at TYT say this thing. We have to organize along class lines. They have no idea what that means. And if they do, though, maybe some people that are disingenuous as you are may use class reductionism in that way. Class reduction means you refuse to acknowledge the fact that other oppressions exist that influence it under class reductionism. You will not acknowledge the fact that the damage that white supremacy and racism has had on the black people and how we are disproportionately affected by white supremacy that it influences the likelihood of us having jobs and how well we will be paid, that it increases the likelihood of us being used as slaves to this day through incarceration. Class reductions say ignore race, ignore gender, ignore all these other factors that cause oppression and just focus on class. Though I think class is the final factor and really testifies to the situations that people are in, it is far from something we can ignore. Black folks are disproportionately impoverished. Black trans women, especially. Class reduction isn't just talking about class. Yes, there are such things as race reductionists and gender reductionists, but they are just as foul as class reductionists. However, the point that people are trying to say is that if you don't acknowledge the intersections and how it affects people's positionality within class, then you are pretty much a class reductionist, which means you are also probably a white supremacist and misogynist and the list goes on i pity the fool that has subscribed to overthrow media or donated to their patreon all money is blood money cut the pig and president's hand bloody all money is blood money war for the gold even shouldn't run it 
All money, here's blood money Pop a wicked murder and we find it funny All money, here's blood money Organizing along class lines means is that you organized with people in the same class, meaning whatever political stripe they come from, meaning if they're a libertarian or a socialist or a Republican or a uh, boogaloo boy or a socialist or a communist, all those people have to come together. That's called, so it's just like when you organize in a union. I've been in unions my whole life. The way you don't organize a union is you don't go to the shop floor and go, who here's a boogaloo boy? You're out. Who here's a proud boy? You're out. Who's here as a libertarian gun nut? You're out. Who here's a Trump voter? You're out. Okay, who's left? Now we're going to organize against the man with you people. That's not how organizing works. So the idea that unions are the way that have been shown to be the best and the most beneficial for the whole of people is a blatant lie. Because unions, for a long time, were excluding black folks from being able to work within them. And in fact, a lot of the scabs were black folks who had no way to get income coming to fill the jobs when the white unionists struck. The white unionists would attack them as a lynch mob. Mm, good cracker, good cracker, from Nabisco. A class reductionist, right, is to not acknowledge that factor. Now acknowledge the fact that black folks have been systematically pushed out of positions of power within the union. That black folks were denied even being able to enter it for the majority of their existence. To idolize and simplify unions to be this all good thing is absolutely cap. Now to say the idea of unions is amazing is true. Yes, the workers come together to unify to be able to get their needs met is an awesome idea. But the way it's been implemented, especially in the U.S., has not been good. And this is an example of class reductionism, right? You want to think the unions are all good, but they're not all good because humans aren't all good. All these hardworking, working class white folks you're talking about are the same white folks that were lynching my ancestors. Think about that shit. Contemplate on that shit. Now we about to get the most ludicrous claim y'all made the whole fucking video is why the Black Panthers teamed up with the KKK in Las Vegas to get their welfare checks back. That's why that's when that's why they killed Fred Hampton. Why did they kill Fred Hampton? Because he was organizing black people? No, because Fred Hampton was organizing southern racist whites with black people in Chicago and they were realizing they had more in common than they had separate and different and that's when they killed Fred Hampton. So that's the thing that they can't have and that's what people who say we have to organize along class lines. When you hear somebody at the Young Turks say we have to organize, they don't mean it for a second. They hate people who are in the different political party than they are and in the same class. They hate those people and in fact their business model is uh, built on clickbait, uh, hating those people. So I, I'll just, would you like to comment on that? Well, sure. And, you know, the biggest cure in U.S. history for racism has always been the picket line. When black workers and white workers see they have a common economic interest, this breaks down the divisions. It was the CIO and the, you know, in their effort to, to spread unions, uh, it was that that broke down the racial divisions. When the Communist Party in the 1930s was going into the auto plants and the steel mills, often uh, they would break down historical divisions among workers and build multiracial unions. Uh, you hear about in the South when the sharecroppers were organizing, how you know William Z. Foster and Gus Hall would go to a town and, and give a speech and how, and how the, the, the white workers would rip up their Ku Klux Klan cards and say, my enemy isn't the black people, my enemy is the, the, the plantation owners and the capitalists and the big bankers. You know, that is how you overcome racism is getting people to see they have something in common, bringing people together. Uh, it's through those kinds of struggles that you can break down inequality and that people can see that they have more in common. Um, and by, by creating artificial divisions ahead of time and discouraging economic struggle, you're setting the stage for the opposite. You're setting the stage for basically whipsawing the population. You know, there's an old device they call the whipsaw, right? And it's like a, it's like a two-man saw. And when one guy's pushing, the other guy's pulling. And when one guy's pulling, the other guy's pushing. That's kind of what they're doing right now in the United States. Uh, they want one section of the population to think that they can only gain at the expense of another section of the population. And then they go to the other section and say, oh, you can only gain at the expense of the other one. And right. we've got working people all throughout the United States pushing and pulling on each other in a culture war 
uh, and we're all getting poorer and their agenda of creating a low wage police state marches ahead. And we got to have class solidarity. We got to go against it. Wait, what? You said what? You said the Black Panthers organized hand in hand with the KKK. Oh boy, that's a big allegation right there. Well, uh, I know the only link and only information that verified that in any type of way was one specific guest that you had on called Reverend Annie. I couldn't validate Reverend Annie as an official person who was down with the black liberation movement. The fact is, even in the story she told, the other Panther was like, yo, that's a clan, fuck that. And then she went and held him hand to hand with the clan and after they called her a nigger to her face, which I'm like, whatever, I guess. But uh, I don't think that's really how I would handle that situation because at that point you need to mop them motherfuckers. Like <laughs> you mop mop it. You gotta sleep them real quick like, because they didn't call you nigger to her face. They ain't really gonna be on their side at any given point. You know what I mean? Now you talk about Fred Hampton and the Young Patriots. Well, see, here's the thing. The young Patriots were not the clown. I mean the Klan, but the Young Patriots weren't those fucking clowns that are called themselves the Ku Klux Klan. They were a different type of organization that had definitely white supremacist tendencies, um, but also the Confederate flag hasn't always meant to everybody that they hate black people. That's a misnomer that just really isn't true like that. But were they white supremacists? Were they racist? Absolutely. But so is every other white person on this fucking country. Like I'm not, no cap, but I'm not talking about passive racism. I'm talking about like, no, y'all are racist as fuck. Y'all systematically oppress our people left and right. You know, so the idea and the concept that you are pushing Black Panther Party works with the Ku Klux Klan is ludicrous. That's not what happened. The young Patriots working class people who saw the Confederate flag as a sign of rebellion, a sign of uh, white people taking their autonomy. And then for Hampton came in and let them know like, you know, fuck all the racist shit, man. You know, it ain't us, it ain't our fault. We in the same situation as you, let's rock. And white folks are like, I right, bet. You know what I'm saying? I'm not against right-wing leaning white folks, but I am against the Klan. I am against Nazis. I am against fascists. Just like any other black liberation movement organizer would be, including the Black Panther Party. My elder was literally a Black Panther and in a George Jackson Brigade. Look up Mark Cook. Shout out Mark. What's up? Hope you see this. He don't really watch YouTube, so probably not. That being said, the idea that you push that these Panthers were working in collaboration with the Klan and that we should do is, is bogus. The Klan is an oppositional, pro-imperialist, pro-fascist, pro-white supremacist organization. It isn't just some white folks who have white supremacist tendencies. This is some white folks that build their whole identity, theology, and belief system around racism around white supremacy. And then the whole situation that mopping came, I already debunked. The whole talk about like, oh, the unions were the best way to organize racially. No, let's be very clear about this. White folks have always been the one to stand in the way of multiracial organizing, not black folks. The fact that we want to acknowledge the white supremacy that y'all have done to us is not unreasonable. And it's actually mandatory for us to be able to trust you because y'all, Y'all just tend to motherfucking repeat the problem over and over again. And the fact that if we ignore those behaviors and the way that y'all move, then we end up losing every time. So why should us as black folks give you that benefit of the doubt? Especially someone like Moppin, Jimmy Jimmy. I'm not convinced that you actually have bad intent. I feel like you were just defensive, lost little white dude that needs to get his shit together and actually research your shit better. Because you bring Reverend Annie on, in no way represents the whole of the Black Panther Party. In fact, she was going against the wishes, according to her own statement, of the other Black Panthers. You don't get to put that on them. And I suggest that you educate yourself a little bit better before you speak on it. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, hit that bell so you can stay notified. Share this video everywhere you can. Make sure to cop my music on Bandcamp and subscribe to me on Patreon. Follow me on all my other socials, all at Big Villainous, B-I-G-G-V-I-L-L-A-I-N-U-S. Yeah. Thank you for rocking with me. Stay tuned. We're still working on that Hurricane video. It's coming out soon. Also, make sure to peep my gun control video. Link will be in the description as well as there will be a thumbnail at the end. You know what it is, villains. 
stay rocking with this. It is the overthrow. All money is blood money. Cut the pig and presidents and bloody. All money is yeah, blood money. War for the gold, even turn money. All money is yeah, blood money. Problem with your murder, you can find it funny. All money is yeah, blood money. Pig and pig and slave and they get the funny. Living through that struggle and we looking for the way out. We confuse freedom with the devil's fucking payout. So when we hungry, pull that strap or that blade down. If they dare move, that bitch will get laid down. Laid out is it fade out, baby? Blood sprays out what you made out. Move like you got gout when you hear bow bow. We move like we mouth mouth, crackers bow down. 